this is Kelly with Luminary Nail Systems, and I am so excited to hand over the reins for part two of our three-part series with our master educator, Tara Robinson. Welcome back, everybody. This is Tara for part two, which is our application of hope. So here I am just applying our primer, which is called Commit. Just a nice thin coat, making sure not to touch her skin. And next we're gonna move on to Hope. So I use my Hope out of the 10 milliliter bottle as kind of like my base coat. So I just get some out of the little bottle and brush it on nice and thin. So I'm getting as close as I possibly can without actually touching the skin. Once you touch the skin, it'll just suck it back like a straw and it'll make a hot mess for you. So you have to wipe it off and start again if that happens. So I'm making sure to pull back her tissue as I'm going. So I use my middle finger when I'm on the right side of her finger and her thumb when I'm on the left side of her finger. When I'm in the salon, I do five fingers at a time for this thin layer and then have her go in the lamp for 30 seconds. So I'm gonna double check everything, use my little detail brush to get the, any nooks and crannies that I missed in 30 seconds in the lamp. So now I'm gonna use my little black pot. And I use the brush out of the 10 milliliter bottle to apply the product. So I'm gonna go ahead and use our pusher to lift her cuticles up again out of the way so I can get as close as possible. So here I use the melting method and that's the melt method I use the most in the salon, which means that I apply a thin layer again, I just do not cure it. And then I apply my dollop of gel on top of that. So here you can see I set the dollop of gel down and I just kind of let that slip layer that I put on there, the wet layer, just kind of pull that product back and I'm just guiding it. And I'm making sure not to get too close to the side walls because that slip layer is gonna pull it down and if you put the bulk of the product too close, it will flood the side walls. So you can apply it fairly close and then come back in with your detail brush to pull it even closer. And always double check if you don't get enough product on the nail the first time and you feel that you need to add more, make sure you take a good look at the nail first because there might be product that you can move around before you add more. That way you don't get too much. So I'm checking my light lines here and I'm checking to make sure my sidewalls are straight and that I have the product all the way over. And after I do that, I will have her flip her hand over just so I can check from the underside to make sure that her arch is where it belongs. And if it's not, if I need to move some product around, I just use that little tiny detail brush and just gently pull it where I need it to go. And I always make sure to dip my detail brush into the product first just so that it has product on it. I'm not necessarily adding more to it. If I need to, I can but it just seems to pull a little bit better if there's already some product on the brush. And again, I check it from the side to make sure it doesn't have that kind of claw look at the free edge. So I'm pulling it down just a hair to make sure it has a nice 
gradient to it. So onto the middle finger, we're gonna lift those cuticles up again, apply a thin slip layer, and then grab the dollop of gel and apply our structure. Never be afraid to use that detail brush if you need to use it. Sometimes it just helps make things a little bit easier. So there I checked the side to make sure that it wasn't too much product before I added a little bit more. Just pulling it down, making sure everything's covered. So her ring finger has sticky cuticles on that inside. So I used my detail brush first. That way I don't have to get the bigger brush from the 10 milliliter bottle too close and risk it um, sucking back in there too much. And you'll actually see in a minute that it did end up sucking back a little bit and I used the um, pointy end of our cuticle pusher to clean it up. So if you look back at her cuticle, you can see where it kind of flooded a bit. It's a pussy. And on her pinky, there was also a bit of her skin that was trying to kind of lay back down in my way. So I used my pusher to move it and then the detail brush to get under there nice and clean. Again, not setting it down too close because that slip layer is going to pull it back right where you need it. That slip layer is kind of like a road map. Wherever you put that, the dollop of gel you apply is going to going to go where that slip layer is. And make sure you always check your nails from this side. It's really easy to look nice from the top and once you turn to the side you can see your arch is not where it belongs. It could be back too far or forward too far where you can get that hook at the end and you just, just check it from the side, that's easy to catch. So in the salon, I work one finger at a time. I do all five for that thin base layer and cure. And then I go one finger at a time in the light between, in between every one. And then once I've done with the thumb, I make sure that her hand is in for a full cure of 60 seconds. And her thumb I actually am going to apply a little bit differently because I'm going to do some inlaid art on this, which will be in part three. So I'm brushing on the thin slip layer. And then I'm just going to get a little bit of a dollop out of my jar. And I'm just going to barely float and then just pull it down the a little bit. And I'm not too worried about this layer being as level and smooth because I am going to apply art and glitter to it. So after a full 60 second cure, I'm just cleansing with alcohol and a lint-free wipe and I'm gonna go into my filing. So I file at the end for a couple of reasons. Um, one, because to help prevent any free edge lifting, it's better to bevel the free edge. And by bevel, I mean file at an angle. That way it, it makes the product be further out than the natural nail. And I always file and shape from the underside. That just aids the beveling process. 
The other reason that I file at the end is that I have developed arthritis in my hands, so I file as little as possible, and this way I only have to do it once. When you're shaping a square or squivel nail and beveling your file, it's hard to not lose your corners. So the best advice for that is to angle your file as much as you can without losing your corners, and then come in with your e-file with a sanding band or a cross-cut diamond bit, which is what I prefer. Either are fine, whatever you prefer. And I use mine on probably 8,000 RPM and just come in at an angle to help bevel that, there's a good shot for you. About that angle, so you can bevel that natural nail back a little bit. Thanks for joining us for part two. Make sure to check out part three, where we'll be putting pretties on top. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like this video, share it with your nail tech friends, subscribe to us, follow us on Instagram, and like us on Facebook.